What's going on guys? So in today's video, I got my man Vitor here and today is going to be a little bit of a, maybe a discussion video. So you were in the community for a very long time, yeah. you've been out for a long time, and the community has changed a lot since you left. Yes. And I find that the community is more of a younger man's community nowadays. You know, we've got some great new guys like Gents, uh, Gen Sense, Cascade Sense, uh, Magistent. Uh, Mr. Smelly 1977, but today we're going to pay homage to the old school guys, the guys that came out in like 2008 to pretty much the time when you left. Alright, so we're just going to throw out some names and we're going to have like a little bit of a discussion. So the video may be a little bit long, so the first name is going to be Cubby. Oh, he's uh, he's the original. He's the godfather, right? He was yeah. the first person to actually post videos on fragrances. Yeah, he was the first guy I came across. Yeah, he's uh, he was amazing, super fun, entertaining, uh, short, straight to the point. Yes, that's what I liked. Yeah, short videos, um, very very precise. His, as he stated, his videos were very short. They were straight to the point, no like jibber jabber in between. He just got right down to the nitty gritty. Yep. And uh, we actually had lunch with him uh, not too long ago today. Next guy is Robes08. The guru. Um, oh man, I remember the days that I looked forward to watching the huge half an hour oh, hauls yeah. every time he came back from his traveling. Um, I, lo I love how much uh, and how much depth he has on his videos. I know a lot of people don't really appreciate the 20 minutes, half an hour videos. I yeah. love them. Uh, I love to see the breakdown, the detail, the experience and all the tests. I, I just love that. I think that he has probably the best knowledge in the game. You know, and Mark is very much about the community. He's about like the yes, new guys to yes. the top guys out there. Um, and I'll say this, and I have kind of like some bragging rights, but out of everybody that I've worked with, and I think that I have, I work with the most amount of guys when it comes to the in-person collaborations. Like, you know, I got the guys from London, Chicago, New York. I got Vancouver right here. Mark was the most, when I met Mark, that collaboration meant the most to me out of my entire four year Four years of doing this. Yeah, no, I remember watching him, um, and he always, I, I love how much he gave back to the community. Yeah. He created the Fragrance Idol, uh, he went on for a few years. We have amazing reviewers that are still doing the reviews to this day that came yeah. out of that. Uh, he, the, his whole point, uh, the whole goal that he always had was to gather people, um, get people excited about fragrances, working together, mm -hmm. uh, the collabs, he was always part of everything. And he did the occasional shout out. Back yeah, day, always, I remember too. very good point. He was always, again, well, another point of him giving back to the community was yeah. the shout outs. Uh, long videos, just calling new reviewers out and mentoring them and just telling everyone to subscribe. And when it came to his nose, he would pick out every single, uh, I call them notes, he calls them accords. So, it well, depends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I, I don't know how he does that. So. Franconator. Great guy. Um, he was an, another person that unfortunately disappeared a little bit. Um, I have an amazing experience with him. I remember when Baikita was first launched in New York. Okay. Um, he was kind enough to send me a whole bunch of samples to Vancouver for me to try. And that again goes back to the whole community that we used to have before. Yeah. And everyone was always together, we always chatting. Uh, Frank Ed was amazing. I really, really met him. him. Met him in 2013. Uh, I wish he was still around because even though his a lot of his tastes were very different than yep. mine, I still like watching his videos. He was more about the niche towards the end, and he also did a lot of uh, interviews. Yes, he did. I, I think that, which was something different uh, to the community because everybody was just doing like your top tens and your typical reviews. He actually started doing uh, interviews, which is on, on, a, on, a, so on a, an aspect that a lot of people from New York have that opportunity, right? Yeah. Uh, so luckily, on his side, he has, he's able to do that. Yeah. So uh, next guy is my Mickers. Yeah, I, uh, he was the the winner of the first ever fragrance idol. Okay, I never knew uh, that. Makers was uh, he he was amazing. He's still amazing. Uh, I remember when he first came out. Uh, his videos were so entertaining. I used to love his laugh, and I still do. I, he's, he's still putting out videos. Out of the older guys, I would say he is the most entertaining to this very day. Absolutely, absolutely, and it's not about. Like a lot of things in the video is just about his personality. He, uh, he comes in and as soon as he drops the first lap, the, you, you, can, you cannot laugh with him. He's a natural in front of the camera. He's very charismatic. Yes. Energetic. And as you stated, that laugh. That's, that laugh is his signature. That's, it's so distinct because I, I did a spoof on Dan 
a couple years ago and I tried doing the laugh and I started choking because it was... <laughs> <laughs> you just can't. It's unique. Next one is Fragrance Fanatic 1. Al. He has balls. Yeah. Uh, he was the first person that actually started like reaching out to people in opinion. Um, and to this day, he stays true to what he started, the street yep. sense. Um, it takes a lot of, out of someone to actually be able to stop random people in the street. Especially and just, New York. It's it's so special what he does, and I remember that he used to do the battles with the three. Okay, uh, yeah, he uh, used to get into, uh, um, yeah. He he was the one that kind of started this whole face-off battle type yeah. thing. Yeah, the thing I like about Al is like as you stated, though he he has a lot of balls to stop random people because I personally I don't like being stopped in the middle of the street. It's like, hey, you want to smell this or can I interest you in this? No, and being from New York, that's a tough city. You know, they they say that New Yorkers are. People from New York say that they're very friendly, which is, it's debatable. Well, I personally don't think so very much. They're, New York is like Torontonians, and I could say this because I live in Toronto. We're not exactly friendly people. <laughs> but Al is definitely like, and respect to Al because, have you seen him lately? No, I haven't. He's seen. lost like 40 pounds. Really? 40 pounds. I think it was like, it's between 30 and 40, but he looks so much healthier and so much better. Nice, that's great. So Big props. Next one is Crystal uh, Bitawi Blood. Yes, uh, I love his reviews. Uh, to me, uh, one thing I love about Crystal is that he stays very truthful to his taste. Very. Um, he, he was again very very original. At first, when he created the that little segment, it was called the Psycho Shit. I've seen a few of those um, episodes. I love that, and I and, and again, it's all about being creative. Uh, I love. He has a certain particular taste for his fragrances. Um, I remember when he was the first big lover of Comme des Garçons and he was just he, coming up with a whole bunch of in between quotes weird fragrances. Yeah. And Comme des Garçons need to sponsor him or something. Oh no, he's, he's a, always plugging them. I think out of everybody in our the history of the community, he's plugged them the most. No, and it's amazing. Uh, it's again a true, a true fragrance lover. Uh, when he was in Indonesia, um, he was going out of his way to research and try yeah. to get those fragrances. I, I really like his taste. I really yeah. like his style. Well, his tastes are very different. Uh, they're an acquired one, you know. But he does. Uh, he definitely does like the artsy, yeah. artsy stuff, and something that's totally different. Like I like the mainstream stuff. Cristo doesn't, but that's cool, you know. But I like the way that he speaks in front of the camera because he's very eloquent and articulate. And I wish that I could explain things like that, like like he does. But he's also very casual. I'm a casual guy. Yeah. He'll have a bottle of beer uh, uh, on the beer, table yeah. and he'll talk fragrances for like 20 minutes. I love that. Draft Duck. Cody. Cody's great, man. Uh, <clears throat> he evolved a lot. Uh, he was one of those that it yeah. took a while for him to flourish. Uh, he's now at his, uh, his A game. Um, I remember every time um, Robes used to go out on his hiatus and used to do his thing. Yep. He yep. always they always support a drag dog, always go towards him, always like, suggest everyone, all the subscribers to go him. He's very knowledgeable, I love the way he speaks, uh, he became, uh, he really came out of his shell. Oh absolutely, because when he, like you watch a, a video from Cody from the very beginning to where he's at now, and he's not like shy or soft spoken, yeah. he, he really knows how to speak in front of the camera. And I know that he originally started his YouTube channel, on, I believe now, to help him with public speaking. Yeah. I remember he's saying something like that. And uh, another thing that I like about Cody is that he reviews anything, whether it's a high-end niche to like a low-end designer. He doesn't judge. He's just, and he's very, he's unbiased. Like he'll give you straight to the, to the point. But like if he personally hates a fragrance, he's going to state, maybe you will love it and that's okay. Yeah. Kirill. Oh my God, our Russian boy. Yeah. Um, oh he, my was, God. he was a bit of a pretty boy back in the day. He was a pretty boy in the community. I will say so, yeah. <laughs> uh, he used to do his uh, naked uh, naked unboxing. Yeah, that was something totally uh, totally original. It yeah, but it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. Uh, it was very creative again. I, I like his taste. Uh, back in the day, we always kind of went towards the same fragrances um, mm -hmm. because of the fragrance that we discussed. Um, it was fun. I remember. I, I, I miss Kirill. He was great. The thing that I, I also thought was a little bit different about him was because like he had like a catchphrase, uh, delicious or something like that. So he he'd have let's say like a talking about two different fragrances. It's like a like a battle or a face off, and he goes, which one is more delicious? 
and he knocks out the other fragrance, he goes, delicious, 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 <laughs> you know? So, but yeah, like, he, he was kind of like, he was the pretty boy uh, back, was, back yeah. then. He still is. I, I still see him once in a while over Facebook. We don't really check that much. Okay. Um, good guy. Patrick Youngblood. He was great. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, he used to work in the fragrance industry. Yeah, he stayed at that um, camera. He was, uh, he was very, again, talking about being very outspoken, very good at speaking about fragrance. He was really good at that. Yeah, and he was also blunt. He was, he didn't care if you didn't like his opinion or not. He was bold about it. Yeah. Now, I did like him. Um, there's a, a few fragrance videos that, that really caught my eye, and I wish Patrick was still around, but unfortunately he's not. Next one is Fragrance Bros. Oh my god, I, I, I've seen the channel coming from the beginning, yep. uh, when he used to do it, I can't remember the name of the first guy, yeah. and then he had uh, Jared, Jared. Uh, oh my god, that, I love Daver, uh, please keep on doing whatever you do, man, I love your channel, to me, um, it's, it's my go-to channel, I have to say this, because he, as you said, like he reviews everything, mm -hmm. um, he does, now he's doing fragrance news, um, so it's very versatile when it comes to the fragrance world. He really gives you from all kinds of like lists. Uh, he does he, he does in depth reviews. Um, I love um, that little stuff because I'm a big fan of Andy Tower. Okay. He had that that little tower defense. You remember? No, I don't. It was a, a few videos that he was talking uh, uh, talking good things about some fragrances that are not well loved about okay. Andy Tower. All right. Um, no, I love David, man. I really, really do appreciate it. And the chemistry that he had with Jer was, was, was unbelievable. Was great, yeah. you know? Those two they always had different opinions, which yes. was good. Um, but like, they had that, that bond and that, that they, they worked off each other so well. So well. And they were funny. And I actually uh, met Dave last uh, February. And that really meant a lot to me when I uh, met him at StyleCon. So, Cutlass Supreme SL. Brandon. Uh, he was good. Um, uh, oh man, and those guys from the old school—they were all amazing. They were—they um, they, they were different, different styles. Cutter was the. Um, how can I put this? He—he he was a pretty boy too. He, yeah, he, he was. Had, he had this, the the little uh, nice swag out of him. Uh, yeah. Uh, he brought in the wife once for to make a joke of a video. I remember that. Uh, <laughs> it was—it was, it was fun. He—he's uh, the one who started uh, starting lineups. Yeah, that that's even, true. That even guys, like brand new specking guys to this very day. They still use that idea. Exactly, yeah. And he came out with that in like, I think it was 2010. Wow. You know, I did a few of those, not anymore, because they're not for me, but Brandon did have that swag. He had a knack for the camera. Yeah. Uh, but he got into like a different hobby. Yeah, was, I remember. Uh, uh, fishes. Fish, yeah. Like, yeah aquariums. Aquarium. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> he started making a few videos about that. I'm like, mm, this is getting a little bit off track now. <laughs> very much so. <laughs> Uh, next guy, J.R. Ryder. Oh man, he was an amazing guy. I remember, and I, this is funny because when I discovered fragrance reviews on YouTube, J.R. was the first uh, review that I found. Um, I was looking, I can't remember exactly which, I don't know why I, I decided to search about a fragrance on YouTube and I discovered the first video that popped was J.R. He plugged the hell out of La Nuit de Nome from one. Yes, so. yeah, he was the first one to really <laughs> call the attention on La Nuit. And he was a big boy, but he lost a lot of weight. Yeah. Like the last maybe five videos of his channel was more about bodybuilding yeah. and nutrition. No, uh, I did like him, and I, I like that when. What I really liked is when he would team up with uh, Al, you know, because like they, I think he was from Jersey. Actually, both are from Jersey, but they would meet up in New York. They had a street videos with both of them. Yeah, they? they had a couple of them. They had a street video with them. It's just unfortunate as to what happened to him. Yeah, it was it was a sad thing that kind of what led into him leaving, leaving the community. Uh, unfortunately, he has an accident at his uh, house. And, yeah, caught fire or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and he lost like 90% of his collection. Almost. But uh, he's actually in the military now, so that's mad respect right yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, big respect to J.R. Ryder. Uh, this is a name that really... Nobody ever mentions Mr. Fabino one. Oh man, this kid was amazing. He was this kid knew how to dress. Yeah. Uh, he always came with nice watches. I remember that he was always sitting by on his bedroom. It was sitting on his bed. Uh, bed or he'd be at his desk and the camera would be right there and he'd have his computer. Yes, that's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, I, one thing I always remember, like he always had amazing watches on. Yep. Uh, always fairly good dressed. Um, 
He was in the community for a short while ago. Yeah, he was only in for like maybe six to eight months. Yeah. Um, I think he was an American living in Germany. Oh. But the, the first video that I saw of his was uh, Kenneth Cole RSVP. Nice. And he always, he always plugged in his true religion genes. Because <laughs> he'd get up from his bed and <laughs> oh my he goes, God. guys, what do you think? And like, oh, uh, yeah. No, I wish that he was still around because I actually liked him. Yeah. Next guy, unfortunately, left about two years ago now. The Lupe experience. Oh, Lupe was amazing. Um, to me, he was, again, yeah, my opinion, the best. When he comes, like, back in the day, the classy, gentleman-like, yep. super well-kept, uh, knew how to present himself, well-spoken, um, the British accent a little bit. Um, it was, it was, it was nice. He was kind of like the James Bond of the fragrance community in I can some see ways, that. by the way that he dressed, because. He dressed in suit and ties, and his manners were, were really good. He was very well spoken. Too. Very, yeah. And he had something. I think he created what, like the perfect thirty. Yes, that was his. Yeah. So like uh, the perfect thirty uh, bottles or decants in one's collection. So like he yeah. said that thirty was the ultimate number. No more, no less. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know why he stopped. He just he this just stopped bluntly. Uh, he was he was good though. I remember the way he spoke. Uh, the way he spoke about fragrances. Um, his style, but he also the had videos. he had like, and I'm not really into like the super fancy expensive stuff, but he really did plug in a lot of luxury niche. Fragrance. Yeah, no, I remember, uh, in, uh, he was uh, he, there was one fragrance that he that he did tell me so many times for me to try. It was a uh, good girl, good girls not bad by by Killian. Uh, it's okay, uh, he was he was he was a by Killian like a he same with Tom Ford. Him, yeah. Tom Ford and Killian is he always yeah, them. yeah and uh, he he came uh, he he brought to attention a few of the higher end fragrances. Um, yeah, love he says too. Uh, next guy is Gents Brothers. The German kid. Yeah. Yes. He was the original German guy. He was the original kid. German. Absolutely. Again, love watches. I remember he was doing videos about watches. Watches. Before. Pens. Pens. Uh, he was good. Uh, amazing accent. Um, he was very well kept as well. Yes, he always was well presented. He, yes, and I was just about to say that. Yeah. Uh, I think that he stopped when he moved to Sweden. Or he something. moved somewhere else to study. Uh, he was. Uh, he moved to a different country to study, and he, he, had to, he had to stop making the videos. Yeah, he just completely like stopped, deleted everything, and it was sad. Because the kid was good. He was one of my favorites when I when I first started uh, not reviewing but watching. You know, I, I came in watching maybe in 2011, like winter 2011, and he was actually one of my favorites. Nice. So, uh, Tim Swiftcoft, Swiftcoft. Uh, Tim is another guy that it's, he was one of the originals. Uh, I think he came even before. He was right after Cubby, right around the same. Yeah, time. and then it was even before Mark. Um, always review our his bedroom. Uh, he kept the collection in the back of him. Yeah, he was a good guy. Uh, I never had a lot of interaction with him. I wish he didn't quit. He he, he also got uh, was into bodybuilding. The bodybuilding. Yeah, he was a, he was a trainer, I think. Yeah. So uh, it's just. The way he left, though, I think a lot of people really were heartbroken by that, and were kind of like jaded by it as well. Because like he yeah. said that I'll come back, I'll do his sporadic videos and everything, but and never came back. Um, John Kerosene. Kerosene, uh, he's living the dream. Yeah, he was one of us. Now he's out there creating amazing fragrances. Uh, I used to really like his style too. Uh, he was the review movie. style was good. He was quiet. Quiet. Very humble, genuine, and down earth, but he didn't have like the most. He wasn't charismatic. Okay. He was very like uh, subdued in a sense, his energy, but he was funny. I love. He always had a bit of an editing in the back, in the end of the video, kind of joking around related to the fragrances. Yeah. No. So um, I, I okay. Well, sorry to cut you off, but I remember uh, he did Givenchy play okay and it was in the shape of an ipod back yes. in the day and towards the end of that video you go he, he did like a little skit and says oh, i'm gonna go play with myself now you know <laughs> no he was good I, I like his style um, and he really knew his taste and I, I appreciate so much what he's doing now because i think that everyone that really appreciates brands that really are like law francis i think the ultimate goal we have is to create our own friends and he's the true indie guy yeah yeah he, he back in the day used to do everything by hand 
Yeah. The fragrances, the bottles were hand painted. They had a metal plate that he was the one like uh, um, um, working on it. It was everything handmade. The best fragrance that I've smelled from him, like some of his fragrances, is a bit of an acquired taste. Okay, I could see you liking it because just because like your tastes are very different than mine, but unknown pleasures, I believe it was called. Uh, it's like a lemon sorbet, wow. lemon lemon ice cream. It was just. No, it's 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 pretty it's pretty cool to see someone that came out of our side and doing doing his thing. Doing it good, doing good. Uh, you can find his famous uh, everywhere now. Yeah. Katie Puckrick. Well, she was uh, the first person to actually start editing videos so in a very very professional way. To me, back in the day when we started doing reviews, um, even before everyone, it was very casual the way we did reviews, the way everyone was doing reviews. There wasn't a lot of editing. Mm -hmm. um, Katie, well, Cubby always had a little bit of editing, but yeah. very little bit. Not Katie, like her. No, no, she was doing professionally. She started doing it and she had a goal and it was very professional. She was like the first lady of fragrances. Yeah. yeah. You know, very eloquent. She had a bit of a sense of humor that she would add yes, to it. Yeah. A little bit of satire, but she was very well spoken and just, she just quit just like that. She stopped. I don't even, I wasn't really following her uh, blog. Her blog was always super huge. Oh, okay. So I don't know what happened with that. And the last name, Hiro Zuka. Hiro Miguel. Hiro Hiro Zuka. Okay. Um, well, he's, what can I say? He's my best friend. Um, yeah. I love Hiro. I met him thankfully for the community. We met back in 2010, and uh, the guy could sell anything. And I'm not saying this because I'm his friend. Like, if you watch his video, anything that he would talk about, people would just rush out the door to buy the fragrance. And he was the original hype man. Hype. Uh, no one can hype fragrance the way Hiro could. Uh, the way he would, uh, his swag in front of the camera, he was naturally uh, funny. Uh, it wasn't inf uh, nothing was forced. He shot his videos out out of the webcam of his laptop. And he was telling me stories the other day. No, it's like today you see everyone like this huge editing and like intros and music. And he would shoot the video out of the laptop that he was putting on top of the, the <laughs> a wooden board, and that was the video. And he used to film from his basement too. His basement, like it was in under construction. <laughs> I don't know where he would put on a lamp, and that's it. That was the video. He was smooth. He. Out of everybody in the community, like from the old school, Dan had the most charisma, but so did Hero. Yeah, Hero had swag. Yeah, I mean, that's I think, I don't I think have. that I think that the word when we when I think about Hero was uh, swag. He had, a, he, he had a certain swag. The way he talked about that, you get so involved into his video, and just like I want to, I need to smell that right now. You, you need to buy it. Yeah, absolutely. He was the hype train. Yeah. All right, guys. So that's it. Uh, just wait, wait, wait. Before what? anything, we gotta talk about you. Oh God. I know you came a little bit later than this first original guys, but you your channel has been through a few changes. But now you found your groove. Hopefully. Um, and you stay true to yourself. Uh, you you like you. I know your taste. Uh, if I smell something, I know you're gonna enjoy it because you like your fresh, clean, um, slightly woody fragrances. Very different from you, of course. Why well, I like the heavy stuff. <laughs> what are you wearing right now? Um, um, Rose Oud by Kinem. I'm actually wearing Maison Francis Cachan uh, Silk Oud. Look at that. He's, he's, he's playing on my side now. I'm only wearing it because I'm going to New York in a few weeks and I need something to review down there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, it, but it's amazing. Like your channel, it's been there hanging on. You, you, you've call, as you said, you collabed with everyone. Uh, I think now you're, you're doing what Mark used to do in the past and kind of highlighting everyone, the youngers, the olders, and then bringing attention, trying to get people together, even though it's hard. A lot of times, like, I kind of feel like I'm just, I don't like saying this, I don't feel like I get, uh, like, I, I'm never in anybody's top five or anything like that, and I'm totally all right with that. I just feel like sometimes I don't get the praise that I should, you know, like, you but, should. but I know that, like, I, sometimes I just don't feel appreciated, that's what I should say, but, um, I do see a lot of people saying that I'm like the glue to the community. No, absolutely. I personally don't think so. I think that a lot of people should just start working together a little bit more. Yeah, no, I, but then again, no one is reaching out to anyone to do that, and you always do. Yeah, no, are you always doing I, that? I like doing videos with people. Like, I like doing regular types of collabs where I put two clips together, but I prefer doing something like this. Together, in person. So that's amazing. I appreciate yeah, that, Victor. And, and you know what? I'm just surprised that he actually brought me into this. Appreciate it, thank Good you. Part of it. 
All right, guys. So we're done. This video is uh, 25 minutes and 30 seconds long. So I think that we had enough of a discussion. Guys, thank you very much, Vitor. Thank you very much. You so what me. I'm going to do is every name that we mention, minus myself, of course, <laughs> um, I'm going to attach their links down below. So if you're a newcomer uh, or, just, or part of the new school type thing and you want to see some of the old dinosaurs, whether they're still around or not, because with some of the old dinosaurs are still around. Yeah. Mark, Dan, Al, not that they're dinosaurs. But no, no, no. But some they, of the old timers. The, the Godfathers. Yes, and I'll even attach Vitor's just in oh, case you'd like to uh, see his channel as well. <laughs> so guys, thank you for your time. Take care, and we'll see you later.